Welcome to episode 71, which is the seven strategies to getting a business owner to open up. This episode will give you tangible tips that anyone can use to engage business owners and take the conversation deeper than ever before. Before we examine these seven strategies, let's start by looking at why this is something important to the success of any business consultant, coach, or advisor. And there are four key purposes for getting a business owner to open up. The first is understanding their business, getting a very getting a good grasp of what is happening in their business. And that leads on to the second important aspect, and that is gaining a grasp of their personal and professional challenges and pain points. The third aspect is to build trust and rapport with this conversation as you're getting them to open up. And the fourth is using your ability to converse to build authority and show that you're an expert. If you can do all of these things, ultimately you're going to set yourself up to acquire clients. This is done by creating a highly compelling proposition for individual business owners where you understand why they're in business, what they need, and the challenges that they're currently having. If you can then present yourself as a solution, as a trusted person with expertise, and show that you understand them and can partner with them, well, it's really a no-brainer to create a consulting, coaching, and advisory relationship. David, what do you see as the main objective of getting a business owner to open up? Well, um, firstly, you need to you need to establish a point of of awareness of what you do and what they do, and you've touched on it a few minutes ago, but but you take into consideration any any sort of a global or local problem that's going around, and we all know what what they are, and you probably open up on that, and then you tell them a little bit about your business, and then you'd start. Um, leading into a discussion about their business. Now, there's an old saying um, that goes something like, um, "If they if they trust you, um, then and they like you, and they believe you, then um, you've got the right environment to be able to sell things to them." And that and that covers everything from selling things to selling services to items and, and widgets and all of those sorts of things. So you just need to <clears throat> initially um, indicate to them that you're not trying to ram something down their throat and start selling right from the moment. You need to, to reach that level of trust before you can go on to the next stages of, of working with them and um, discovering um, what their business needs uh, and then once you know that you'll be able to offer your services. Let's take a look at the first of the seven key strategies of getting a business owner to open up. Number one is to ask broad questions. This is a simple technique when you're conversing with someone to ask open-ended questions that are going to prompt the conversation as opposed to to a type of question that will just give you a yes or no answer. It's going to drive the discussion and really get the owner to open up, or anyone that you're talking to for that matter. Think of questions that start with W's and the how. The who, the what, why, when, and how. Those are the sorts of questions, when you start with them, it's going to give you an open-ended answer. Now, the exact question will depend on the situation and how far you are in the progress with this business owner or potential client. You might be meeting them for the first time or you might be meeting them for the second or third time and you're really working to try and discover the challenges within their business. 
but this strategy remains the same. Get them talking and opening up. David, what's your personal go-to for getting business owners that you're just engaging with for the first time? What do you use to get them to open up? Well, it's, it's very simple, and it's how is your business going? And from that, from that question, don't talk and just let them continue talking because um, most people open up straight away. And when you're a little bit further along the process, perhaps you're in a first discovery meeting and you're finding out a little bit about their business, you ask deeper questions, you know, ones like, how do you measure what's going on in your business? Are you achieving the goals you've set yourself? What causes you stress and keeps you awake at night? These are those questions that start with that who, what, why, when, and how. These broad questions that you use to spark conversation and give you an idea of where you can take the conversation deeper. And that takes us on to our second very important aspect our second strategy of getting business owners to open up, and that is to listen. The simple act of listening is one of the most powerful tools in the arsenal of a successful business consultant. If you've just asked a wide-ranging question that's going to prompt discussion, then you should be listening very, very intently because they're going to say things and give you answers and reactions that are going to prompt the next question you want to ask, just to, just to go a little bit deeper and keep the conversation flowing. So you should listen with the sole intent to understand, and that will help you in a number of ways. David, how does listening help us? Well, there's, there's, a, um, there's a biblical saying somewhere, I don't know where it is, but it said God gave you two ears so you can listen twice as much as you can talk. Well, I think it's actually probably 90-10, um, 90% listening and 10% talking, because that's the only way you're going to learn about the business. And there's another um, famous person, well, not as famous as, as God or Jesus, Ernest Hemingway, and he said, I like to listen, and I've learned a great deal from listening carefully. And he says that most people, when they're in conversation, never listen. So it's really important. Um, and it'll give the speaker the spotlight and it'll make them feel like you're listening to them and that and that that they feel appreciated and they're going to feel positive about you. Now, that's that that um, building trust and rapport um, um, mechanism that basically um, the, it, it's, it's almost inverse. The less you try and sell something to them, the more they will trust you. Plenty of time for selling later on, but you've got to get that trust first. And um, you need to hear and process exactly what they're, being, what they're saying because there'll be little clues in there, little nonverbal clues, little all sorts of things in there. Um, and it's kind of a body language thing as well because you'll find there's all sorts of things in there. So if you're doing 90% listening and just putting questions to them, then they will tell you what they want to buy. That's another sales saying. Um, I don't see this as what we do as selling. I see it as influencing them, influencing them to work with us. So yes, yeah, so so they will tell you what they want to buy. The whole thing is in there and you're sitting there um, talking 10% and writing notes and recording the notes and everything. And in those notes, which is what they say, is what they believe and you'll be able to use that later on. Moving on to the third technique, that is to refrain from judgment or giving advice. When you're getting a business owner to open up, offering judgment or giving advice isn't really going to help. You want to create a situation where the business owner is comfortable to share their thoughts and experiences with you. Your entire being, your questions, your tone of voice, your facial expressions, your body language should all be relaxed and completely non-judgmental. Now this is going to put the business owner in a similar situation where they're relaxed. They're in a, in a situation where they feel like they can open up to you. They're not going to be afraid 
you're going to judge judge them and they're going to have confidence as a result and they're going to talk with you and give you honesty which is what you need to have a good and meaningful conversation the second part of this when getting a business owner to open up is it's not time to give advice Free advice is not valued by them because you haven't built enough credibility yet and you haven't um, researched and understood enough about their business to be able to do that. So so you need to continue on um, with your question answer uh, asking of them and the 90-10% if you can achieve that. Um, and because you, you mustn't go into giving advice or, or giving comment because it stops the business owner from talking and uh, they don't value what you say really at this stage anyway. So you likely don't know the total picture so you won't be able to give the best advice until you've done all this research. It's like going to the doctor. Uh, think about going to the doctor. Uh, you go there and you say, I've got a pain in my, in my stomach and, um, and um, it's really intense and it's here and everything else. What is he going to do? He's going to send you for blood tests and then he's probably going to, that's tests. So he's getting more information. He's collating more information about you and you'll probably go for an ultrasound or a scan or something or other. So yeah, so so leave all the advice given to later. So, because you don't want to get into a situation where the business owner could disagree or feel threatened by advice in these early stages, which could jeopardize the relationship. You just need to position yourself as being the expert in all things business and um, leave all of your ad advisory work until later on. Um, and of course, they don't value free and unsolicited advice. Um, what If you do do that, you're going to go off on a tangent um, to, to where you want to be and you're going to get involved in discussions that you don't want to have at this situation. Absolutely right, David. If you're talking and giving advice, you're not listening. And you want that business owner to have a sense of comfort in an environment where they're not going to be judged or force-fed advice. You have a far better chance of getting them to open up if you're just sitting there and listening and not doing those things. The fourth method we can use to get business owners to open up is to use minimal encourages. By using questions, you're encouraging this lead, this business owner, this person within the business that you're working with, you're building rapport and establishing their needs. As we've talked about, you're gonna be directing conversation and you're also gonna have the ability to sense if there's any tension or if there's any pain points and you're gonna use those mechanisms to invite discussion. Now. This use of minimal encourages is going to deepen the quality and the detail of an answer. They're really simple words and phrases that allow you to guide your prospect into more detail. These are, these are really simple phrases such as using the word meaning. So in a discussion, someone, David, might might be telling you uh, my business is, is going really well and then you would say meaning and you're prompting them to go deeper and and tell you what you actually mean by that another example is such as so you could say I've got some really good sales techniques in my business such as get them to elaborate a bit so it's taking that discussion deeper it might be more like uh, I've I've got some really big challenges going on and so and so in the office is, is really difficult to manage. Tell me more about that. It's really simple. I see. Right. Yep. Yes. Ah, go on. These are really simple little words that can prompt the discussion and extend out the answers so you're really drilling down on the pain points, what's going well in a business, what's not going well, and where the business owner wants to go in the future. I'm just going to repeat some of them. Meaning, such as, tell me more about that. I see. Right. Yes. Ah, go on. Tell me more. Have you got any other ones, David? 
The one that I like using, which is a favorite one for, for psychologists and psychiatrists, um, is, is the leaning forward at a certain point and saying, and how does that make you feel? And then zip up, don't say anything. Because what you're doing is you're examining the effect that particular challenge that they have, the effect that's having on them personally. And um, that, that's a very, very good one because you can prod all around it. How does that make you feel? Um, what impact is that having on your personal life? Is this problem overflowing into your family life? Th these are all extensions from there and can... Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to take something that's mechanical, like a business, like money, and you're trying to turn it into something that's personal. And that's where the biggest negative effect comes from, um, from most business owners, majority of business owners that we talk to, is the effect that it's having on their personal life. These minimal encouragers are a really simple way of getting deeper conversations with the business owner, giving you a better connection and of course a more thorough understanding. The fifth technique we're going to use is to be inquisitive. Now being inquisitive and chatty often produce golden results. David, I can think of many instances when you've just sparked a conversation with business owners and found out much more than you ever wanted to. Can you tell us about one of those times? Oh, well, as you said, much more than that you ever wanted to. I have found that by using these techniques, um, these questions and answering techniques that we're talking about, not so much answering, um, but what it does is um, most people, and by the word most, I mean over 75%, uh, open up like a flower in the springtime, and they'll tell you absolutely everything. And this is good. This is really good. Um, and because being a consultant or an advisor, coach, etc., um, you end up wearing seven hats. And one of those hats, or two of them, is a psychiatrist and a psychologist and, and a coach and there are all the others and a mentor and a, a confidant. In other words, they'll tell you things that are private um, and uh, are confidential. So, yes, so... so there's so much comes out of this if you if you handle it the right way. Like they don't want, um, not so much they don't want. They are not aware of these techniques that we're talking about. So so you'll have them. If you, the the longer the meeting can go, the better it's going to be. They're going to talk about all sorts of things, and you're just taking notes down. And remember, you're watching body language. You are you are listening to things they say. You're watching how they how they're sitting there, whether they're comfortable, whether they're fidgeting, whether they're, they're agitated about something, all these sorts of things. And be very attentive um, when you're talking to them. Take notice of what they're saying and write them down. Because if they say it, they believe it. Uh, and that's where you'll, you, you, might, you, you will most definitely come back and you'll use those things that they said and you'll remind them um, of that. So I've said this before, David, and I'm going to say it again because I think it's very important that businesses are usually a personal pride and joy, a labor of love, and something that people are really proud of, no matter how well or how poorly it's going. You know, they've poured their heart and soul into it normally. So what they want to do really is they want to talk about it and tell you about it in the same way that a parent wants to tell you about how amazing and unique and special their child is so if you can make them feel relaxed and spark the conversation it actually flows very very naturally and an example of being inquisitive as a conversation starter you can observe something that is going on in a place of business and make that a conversational Point or something that you can just mention to, to spur the conversation along. Now I can think of a time when I was talking to a business owner trying to book a discovery meeting and I was in a pretty sticky situation. I was met with a lot of resistance from this particular lead who clearly didn't want to know about what I was doing there and he was actually getting a little bit worked up. I, I looked around 
his office, his waiting room, and I saw a travel magazine on his desk with a photo of Rarotonga or a one-page spread of Rarotonga open. And that's a small tropical island in the South Pacific for uh, those of you in the Southern Hemisphere who may not know it. And I quickly asked him, are you going to Rarotonga? And that became the catalyst that sparked a really in-depth conversation that lasted almost an hour. And, and we did talk about Rarotonga for a little bit, but it went in all different directions. And I eventually found out that this business owner had had a guts full of the business he was working in. And it was in the process of of being sold so for that particular business owner I was just a little bit too late but I did manage to find a way to spark the conversation and then find out more about his business once the conversation was flowing now what's more the, the final thing that I found out is that this business owner was actually once his house had sold and his business sale had gone through he was gonna buy a small boutique hotel on Rarotonga on the islands. Yeah, so this was a this was a common interest because I'd been there and and he knew exactly he'd, he'd been there many times as he was going to buy this little hotel. So the entire persona of the business owner changed from when he was really standoffish at the start to once I'd got him to relax and use the techniques of of just listening to him and and talking about something he wanted to talk about first, then he was the situation was diffused he was telling me about himself and and his business and then he even went on to talk about other business owners that he knew in the area that wish that they could sell up their business and move to Rarotonga as well and I thought that was a perfect opportunity. I, I didn't at that stage, but if I went back, I would have asked for referrals or just for their names or to point me in the direction because they're the types of people that would make great prospects and consultants, sorry, great prospects and clients because they obviously feel stuck in their business. You never know where a discussion is going to take you. So being inquisitive can help you to get on with the prospect, can prompt discussion, and help you find out valuable information about the business. The sixth technique we're going to discuss is to use open body language. Now, body, body language and nonverbal cues are a very important way to communicate without words. So you can show emotion, you can show understanding, you can build rapport whilst listening. You don't even have to stop the business owner from talking, but you can show that you're understanding them, you can show that you're hearing them, and you can make them feel comfortable while they're talking without actually putting a halt on the conversation. David, can you tell us a little bit about these techniques? Yes, there's a few of them here, but we'll go through them. Focus directly on the person that you are talking to <clears throat> and practice practice the technique of emptying your mind. Uh, you might be sitting there talking to them and thinking about you need to go and pick up that spare tire from the tire, tire guy on the way home or something like that. Don't. Practice to give them 100% of your focus. Be directly looking at them. Um, and use your head, your eyebrows, tilt your head, um, not, encouraging, not encouragingly three times. Yeah, it sounds weird, eh? But it's um, just practice doing it. Open your body up. So I've just got my hands in my lap now, basically. And um, that will reveal a lot about your attitudes, your emotions, um, and your motives by way the way of you hold your body, especially if you're using a closed or open posture. Open your arms, sit upright, widen shoulders, direct it at the speaker and have your palms up, um, as opposed to have my, I just have my palms down, Julia, so I'll put them up now and you can probably see the difference in my smile. Um, show you're open, relaxed and have a strong willingness to listen and interact. Um, and these non-verbal um, clues uh, will often give the business owner a subconscious feeling that they can be confident and open 
because of your posture and that of course builds trust um, and activate your smile power that's that that's really important as well smile at the appropriate place obviously and it stimulates your own sense of being what do they say um, 65 muscles for a smile and 10 for a frown or something or other so a genuine smile it crinkles your eyes lights up the face and it fa and just let it fade away slowly um, so smiling directly will <clears throat> influence most people to respond to you they'll smile back um, and they won't even be aware that they're doing it um, and they nearly always smile in return and because facial expressions trigger corresponding feelings, the smile you get back actually changes the person's emotional state in a positive way. Imagine if they're really down in the dumps, really down in the dumps, and they're scared, worried, stressed, all of those things, and you come in like a doctor, and you're smiling, and you're showing them that it's not as bad as what it may seem. Also, I've just been thinking while I've been talking here about one of the things that helps people to open up is when they talk about their family, as Julius mentioned earlier. And um, it's always good to know whether they're married, um, um, whether they've got kids, what sports do the kids do, because I bet you, you can find some common interest in there. Oh, your son plays soccer. What club does he play for? Oh, Penrith. Oh, my son plays for Parramatta or whatever and and you can get into a discussion like that and um gosh you know like like if you're in a local area you may even find that um they go to the same school or they're in the same um sports club so yeah very very important um and um you'll find that you're establishing a bond but remember what we said all along here is that is that you need to build that trust and you don't want to well, you shouldn't ram, ram selling your services to him down their throat. You should just um, stay away from that because if you follow this process correctly, um, what you'll get <clears throat> is a situation where they will come to you from a desire and a, and a need to work with you. So you, w you want to uh, encourage them by doing that, and they will. Another thing um, throughout the conversation at the appropriate times um, is to is to lean in and look them in the eye and talk to them. I know that's another one of those things that feels a bit weird, but but it shows that you're interested. It shows that you you want to make contact with them, um, and and yeah, and all those sorts of things rather than looking at the, looking around, looking out the window, um, or other things. Also, too, make sure your phone's turned off like ours is and the and the red thing on the end is turned off that's important because you don't want to break your train of thought um, this is a quite a few things you've got to go through here that's an interesting point you made David about about smiling and using that as a as a technique to show them that it's perhaps not as bad or there's 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 light at the end of the tunnel if they're in a negative situation and you also use the example of a doctor and I can't imagine I can't think of a time when a doctor's ever sat down and and smiled at me and said it's gonna be alright you know we can get through this and given me those feelings just just by conversing with me so if you could do that to a business owner I imagine that's gonna be very very powerful what about that saying a problem shared is a problem halved think about that with a doctor think about that with a business owner uh, and that's what actually happens with the business owner. He doesn't tell his wife what's going on. He doesn't tell his lawyer, his accountant, his brother, friends, colleagues, all those sorts of people. He holds it inside because, as you said earlier on, like his business is, is, is almost like a child. Uh, it's his pride and joy. And he doesn't talk to anybody else because he's afraid that he's going to be judged. Um, as we mentioned earlier, and uh, all of a sudden he's talking to you and you're listening, listening, listening. As we said, a problem shared is a problem halved. The seventh and final technique we're going to discuss today is to use your intuition to trust your gut. Now you're being in these conversations with business owners and potential leads, prospects, whatever you want to call them, you need to be paying full attention. And if your gut is telling you something about someone, if you think that 
they're disguising the truth, not telling you the full picture, well, then you're probably right. And that's time for you to address it. You should address that with compassion and understanding and your full attention and and come at them from a place of hope. If your gut is telling you that a business owner is struggling in a particular area, well, then you should trust that. Follow that path and gently prompt the owner to give you more information. David, can you think of a time when, or an example, when you've used your intuition uh, whilst discussing with a with a lead or a prospect or any business owner? Well, you can see what's going on, like um, use your trust or your gut. Uh, you may have got a referral. This person you're talking to may be a referral from one of your clients or somebody else that you've met. And he says you need to go and talk to John because he's having a lot of problems down there and he needs help from a person like you. Well, when you're talking to him, um, by using your gut, you'll be able to ascertain these things. You'll be able to see what stress he's under, um, what, how many company cars are outside the business and parking, how much stock they've got. All of these things will tell you um, a picture's worth a thousand words. So but you'll be able to prompt the owner once you've picked up these signs from your gut. You'll be able to prompt them and steer them down, steer them down a path to be able to give you more information and more of their challenges. I can think of an example recently from our Consultex network where we had one of our consultants attempting to book a discovery meeting. He just met a business owner and this business owner had a great a big facility. I'm not sure what it was. I think it was manufacturing of some kind. This great big building and it was almost empty. There were a few boxes in the corner and then he went into the offices and there was an office space that was big enough for, for 10 or 15 people and there was basically just the owner in there at a single desk and it was a, a great open and sparse space. And our consultant said said something to the effect of, you know, do you need some help? You know, you, you look like you've got this great big facility and what's going on? And he said, no, no, I'm perfectly fine in a, in a really abrupt and defensive manner. And, and Jim, our consultant, he, he used his gut and he could clearly tell that, that there's something wasn't right in this business and obviously something wasn't going uh, according to plan. So he used that to, to prompt the discussion. He thought, no, this, this is going to be a lose-lose situation if I exit the conversation now. My gut is telling me this business and this business owner aren't where they should be. They need help. So he didn't take that as an indication, that first no, that the conversation should stop. He, he used his gut and thought he's using the word no, but his body language and the situation that this business is in is screaming out for help. So trust your gut and use that to your advantage. In summary of these seven techniques, to really get a business owner to open up and share with you their problems and their desires. Number one, you should ask broad questions. Those questions, the who, the what, the how, the when, and the why, so you get a nice long answer. The second technique is to listen. Listen with two ears and one mouth. Three, Refrain from judgment or advice. Four, use those minimal encouragers, those little prompts for guiding the conversation and going a little bit deeper. Tell me more about that. How does that make you feel? I see. Go on. The fifth technique, be inquisitive, be chatty, look for things to talk about and create conversation. Six, use open body language. Put this potential lead at ease by showing that you're relaxed and then get them to open up more and build rapport by holding yourself and acknowledging them with your body and your head. And the seventh method is to use your intuition and trust your gut. 
if you'd like to get business owners to tell you what their biggest challenges are, what kind of growth and success they'd like to see in the future, all you need to do is demonstrate that you're a trustworthy expert and business owners will be ready to become clients. For all show notes on this episode, visit consultex.com forward slash episodes forward slash 71. Please leave a review on your favorite listening platform. It really helps us to reach more people. And finally, don't forget you can reach out to us and request a topic or have your business consulting questions answered. Thanks everybody. You've been listening to Everything Business Consulting with David Thexton and Julius Bloom.